Hello everyone, this is Rashida. Welcome to my channel. My today's video is going to be on precision recall and F1 score on multi-class classification problem. If you haven't seen my last video on precision recall and F1 score on binary classification, I suggest please feel free to go and check that one first because that one explains the basics of all these concepts. In today's video, we are going to learn how to calculate precision recall and F1 score for each class of a multi-class classification problem. We are also going to learn how to calculate this matrix for the total model. We are going to use this model that we developed in one of our previous videos to demonstrate the calculation of precision recall and F1 score. You will find the link to that video in the description box and I will still give an overview of this model for a refresher. This was an image classification model and we used this famous Fashion MNIST dataset for this model. We had Fashion MNIST trained our CSV data for training the model and we had Fashion MNIST tested CSV for testing the model. For both of them, we first had this label column. The values ranges from 0 to 9 and each digit represents a fashion item. And then we have these pixel values from pixel 1 to pixel 784. So in this first row, we have this label 2 that represents a fashion item. It could be a handbag, it could be a dress, it could be a shoes, it could be a pullover, t-shirt, anything. And then we have these pixel values in the same rows from 1 to 784. All these pixel values represent the pixels of the picture of that fashion item that's in label 2. And here is our testing data set. Here we are just separating the labels from the features. Labels are literally this label column and features has to be these pixel values. The aim of this project was to train the model with these pixel values so that the model learns the pixel values and from the pixel values it knows which fashion item it was. The next, we wanted to see some of the pictures of these fashion items. This is a pullover and some shoes, ankle boot. You can see this is a handbag. And then we imported the logistic regression from the scikit-learn library. Then we trained the model using the training data. After that, we got the scores. After that, we got the scores. For the training set, we had 86% accuracy. And for testing data, we had 85% accuracy. To get to the precision recall and F1 score, we need to find out the Y prediction and also the confusion matrix. So let's see that y print log reg dot predict x test. Okay, now the confusion matrix. So first import sklearn import matrix. Okay, now the confusion matrix. Matrix, the confusion matrix. Y uh, test the original Y and Y pred. Look at the confusion matrix. Here is the confusion matrix. Look, when we did the binary classification, the confusion matrix was two by two because binary classification had only two classes, zero and one. And our in this model we had ten classes. I want to put this confusion matrix in a heat map so it will look nicer and more presentable. Import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Import seaborn as SMS. plt dot figure fix size nine by nine. Now SMS dot hit map cm and not true and now format 0.3 f oh sorry f line width 0 0.5 square true and we do not need any color bar and plt dot y label in y we would have actual values and plt dot x label these are the predicted values 
plt.show. So here's the confusion matrix in a heat map. As you can see, it looks a lot more nicer and understandable. These are the predicted values in this side and actual values in this side. Let's use this confusion matrix now. This is the same confusion matrix. I am just using a different color here. Uh, I hope you remember the formula for precision from my last video. Precision is true positive over true positive plus false positive. So let's see how we can calculate precision for each label. Okay, let's take label 9. What is true positive for label 9? Look, this 947 was the predicted label for label 9. And again, for label 9, we have this 947 true label or actual label. So 947 has to be the true positive for label 9. So here we put 947 and bottom also true positive, we put 947 here. Now the false positive, what is false positive? Look at this two. These two samples are predicted as label 9 by our model. But these two samples are actually label 8. Again, these 40 samples are predicted as label 9, but they are actually label 7. So they are false positives for label 9. So the false positive would be 1 plus 38 plus 40 plus 2. Look, 1 plus 38 plus 40 plus 2. And so we have the precision of 0 0.92, which is really good. For the perfect case, precision is 1. So in that case, 0 0.92 is really high. Here we are calculating precision for label 2. For label 2, true positive is 762. Actual label 2, and we have 762 samples. Now, predicted label 2 is also 762 samples. So, 762 are the true positives. So, true positive over true positive plus false positives. Let's see the false positives. This is in samples. This is actually 0. But our model predicted them as 2. So this alien samples has to be false positive for label 2. This 4, this 15, 72, 105, and 9. They all are actually predicted as label 2, but actually they are not label 2. They are label 8, or 6, or 4, or 1. So the false positives are 18 plus 4 plus 16, 72 plus 105 plus 9, and it's 0 0.77. Now recall. The formula for recall was true positive over true positive plus false negatives. So you also calculated recall for label 9 and label 2. As we already have seen, 947 was the true positive for label 9, and look at the false negatives this time. Look at these three samples. It's actually label 9, but our model predicted as label 8. It didn't predict as label 9. So it was predicted as a negative for label 9, right? Look at this 36. It's actually label 9, but our model did not predict them as label 9. So for label 9, this 36 actually falls negative. So the false negative has to be 3 plus 36 plus 14. So recall is 0 0.947. So recall is very high. Recall for label 2, as usual, you already know this true positive was 762. And then let's see the false negatives. Look at these 14 samples. It's actually label 2, but our model predicted is level 0. So it did not predict it as label 2. So for label 2, these 14 samples were false negatives. Same as this 2, same as this 13, same as this 122. So the false negatives has to be 14 plus 2 plus 13 plus 122 plus 75 plus 12. The recall came out to be 0 0.762 for label 2. I'm only showing precision and recall for label 9 and label 2 only. But you can use the same method and calculate precision and recall for each and every label. The F1 score, we are just going to calculate the F1 score using the simple formula, 2 times precision times recall over precision plus recall. So you can see for label 9, we have 0 
and for label 2 we have 0 0.766. Uh, as a reminder, F1 score is the harmonic mean of precision and recall. And F1 score tend to lean towards the lower value between precision and recall. If either precision or recall, one of them is zero, F1 score becomes zero. So to get a high F1 score, precision and recall both has to be high. The good news is you don't have to calculate the precision, recall, and F1 score that way. You can use the simple line of code. Print now matrix dot classification report. You simply give Y test and Y prediction. And you can see the precision, recall, and F1 score for each label. We have label from 0 to 9. So we got precision recall and F1 score for each label. And you can see this support. These are the number of data for each label. We have 1,000 data each for each label. So total we have 10,000 data. Look, this is good to have precision recall and F1 score for each label. But at the end of the day, we still want one single precision recall and F1 score for a certain model. So for the overall model, we have the precision of 0 0.85, 0 0.85 was the recall and F1 score also 0 0.85, luckily. And weighted average also 0 0.85, 0 0.85, and 0 0.85. Now look, how to calculate this macro average and weighted average precision recall and F1 score? The macro average F1 score is actually the arithmetic mean of all the F1 score. We have 10 F1 score for 10 labels. So simply you add all the 10 values and divide it by 10. That's how we get macro average F1 score 0 0.85. And the weighted average F1 score takes into consideration the number of samples. We have the same amount of data for each label. For 0, we have 1000 data. For 1, we have 1000 data. And for 9, we have 1000 data, all 1000, right? And over we have 10,000 data. So luckily we have 1,000 data each. That's why macro average and weighted average are exactly the same. But it doesn't happen in most of the cases. In most real world data set, we have different number of data for different labels. In that case, macro average and weighted average F1 score can be different. Look at this weighted average F1 score. So the sample size is 1,000 for label zero. And F1 score is 0 0.81. So 1000 times 0 0.81 plus again the sample size of label 1, 1000 times the F1 score for label 1, 0 0.962 plus consider all of them. And at the end for label 9, we have 0 0.934, the F1 score times the sample size 1000 divided by total sample size 10,000. So we got 0 0.85. So you can calculate the macro average and weighted average precision and recall in the same way. Simply take the arithmetic mean of all the precision for macro average precision and simply take the arithmetic mean of all the recall for macro average recall. And for weighted average precision, take precision times number of samples plus precision 0 0.95 times 1000 plus precision 0 0.77 times 1000 and so on. Or divided by the total number of samples and for recall also do the same because we have the same number of samples for each label but it doesn't happen very often in real world in most of the real world data set you will find different number of samples for different labels in that case macro average and weighted average varies well that was all about precision recall and f1 score for multi-class classification problems if you like this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.